There's so many mixed reviews out there about the Canon 5D Mark IV, but I want to tell you today that it's an awesome camera and you should buy one. Let's find out why. Guys, I absolutely love the Canon 5D Mark IV. It's my A camera for all my corporate and commercial shoots that I do. That's right, video. I use it predominantly for video and not really for photography. Mine's got the uh, Canon C-Log upgrade. As soon as I bought the camera, I sent it straight to Canon Australia to get the upgrade and it does a fantastic job in shooting in log. It gives me another couple of stops at dynamic range. It means I can shoot in harsher sunlight conditions, outdoor conditions, and sometimes when lighting's tricky inside. Uh, I love the fact that it has got that function and that functionality. And when I eventually get a C100 Mark II or a C200, I know it can match up really well with those cameras also running C-Log. Uh, I run it with battery grip as you can see. Uh, basically I like to be able to hot swap batteries when I'm on a tripod or when I'm on um, rails and I've got a bit of a bigger setup for the camera. so. That works out really well, and the battery life is awesome with two batteries. It's fantastic. I love the added weight that it gives as well. It provides a bit more weight when I'm shooting on a glide cam. I've got a HD 4000, and I love shooting with that extra weight. My wrist has gotten used to it over time, and it's fantastic. It, it gets really stable footage with my 24mm f1.4 lens uh, and the camera body and the battery grip on the HD 4000, so that's fantastic. I really like the fact that it has a crop factor. I know there's been so much bad publicity out there about the crop factor of this camera, but it's fantastic. Um, I think it's really good because it gives you options from a single vantage point. It gives you multiple different options to shoot with. So there's an example I want to show you where I'm on a 7200 lens at 200. I'm standing a long way away from uh, a, a concert uh, from the stage and I'm getting three options in post with the camera so I shoot the first option is in 25p uh, and just a normal HD image the second option is when I go to 4k it crops in for me uh, 1.7 times crop factor so in we go and then the third option I get is in post I can then crop that 4k image in again in post if I'm punching out to a HD timeline so that gives me three different options that I can utilize and I think that's fantastic uh, the second thing uh, I really love about this camera is the autofocus. Right now I'm shooting on the 5D Mark III, so you can see me holding the 5D Mark IV, and there's no options for autofocus. So in interview scenarios, I'm constantly thinking about Cam B, which is the 5D Mark III, and whether I'm in focus or not. With the 5D Mark IV, I know that focus is going to be spot on 99% of the time. It's only really failed me once or twice. Uh, when someone's moved around a lot in frame, but otherwise it's spot on with the face tracking and I love that feature of the camera. The third thing I really love about the camera is it's got a touch panel and that's a real step up now. Whenever I jump back onto the 5D Mark III or any camera without uh, touchability, I'm just always touching and, and it's such a smooth transition. Some people online said it was difficult to get used to, but it's such a smooth transition across to using the touch screen, especially for video. Uh, it's fantastic that you can do uh, you can do a focus pull with the screen as well. I love that feature and I have used it a couple of times in corporate shoots. So let's talk about the 4K image. I think it's a fantastic image. I love the motion JPEG. The way I do it is same with drone footage and 4K drone footage because I'm only running on, you might be able to see here, the uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, then what I do is I always run proxies. So I'll set up my project and I'll dump my files the day of the shoot or that afternoon. And generally, I'll just let those files run and convert to proxies within Premiere. And what that means is I put my proxies local so that they're on my local computer. It means that when I edit, I don't have any problems with the 4K footage. So the motion JPEG isn't a problem for me. And then I just toggle uh, the proxies at the end when I want to see the final thing. If I want to render before I uh, export, I can. But usually I just check everything and color grade with the proxies and then I render everything out. Uh, and then that will that will default to the actual high-res files and the 4K files. So for me, that really works and has worked great as a workflow. So again, I love the 4K, I love the motion JPEG, the image quality is fantastic. 
great ability of the Canon RAW or the Canon Log, let's call it, uh, is fantastic and it's got that film look to it already out of camera and I love the fact that I can use that um, to work with in post and really push the colors a little bit more and push the look a little bit more in post and I love it, the contrast really pops out of this camera and, um, and yeah, it's fantastic how it shoots like that. I love the added weight of the camera as well, handheld uh, with the battery grip. I'd recommend getting a battery grip if you have the 5D Mark IV. Uh, it gives it a bit more weight, it feels less like a toy and more like uh, a little baby brother of the 1DX Mark II. Now, compared to the 1DX Mark II, which I really love and I do like that camera and I want to get that camera eventually, uh, as well as a C100 Mark II, or probably more than likely the C200. But this camera, I love the fact that it's got that extra weight with the battery grip. It does do really nice 60p, full HD, and I love that feature. Every other camera I've had from Canon since the 7D days, uh, only ever did it in SD or 720p, but this beast does it in, and I do, I think this is a beast. I think this is underrated, probably one of the most underrated cameras out there. Not only is it great for video, but it is a 30 megapixel sensor. So fantastic for photography as well. I don't use it as much for photography, but for that it's fantastic. So it does do 120p at 720, uh, 120 frames a second at 720p. So that's fantastic. I won't really utilize it as much. I'm not trying to be Peter McKinnon or anyone out there who's shooting super slow-mo all the time. I like 60p slow-mo the way that it looks. Uh, so I won't really be utilizing the 120p um, anyway, and I don't like the fact that I have to upscale. I'd rather wait until I get the 1DX Mark II to do any super slow-mo stuff like that. But for someone who wants to do it and get creative with it, it's the capability and the possibility is there to do that. So that's a great feature. I think um, the other thing about it is, obviously the 1DX shoots 60p in 4K. So that's something I do miss with this camera. Probably the only thing I miss, but it's not something that I would utilize a lot. So anytime I'm doing a slow-mo uh, sort of short or anything for a client or corporate, I generally still export to HD. Even if I shoot it in 4K, I can give them an option for a 4K export, but that will sit on their computer as a file or on their hard drive and it will not get used. What gets uploaded uh, to YouTube and to their social and to uh, other platforms they use to distribute video is generally the full HD version. It buffers better, it buffers quicker, and any in any case, even a 4K upload uh, that's embedded on their website would probably generally only be downloaded and watched in either SD or HD. So the fact that 4K exists um, is great, but I always tend to downsample. And I just come off a shoot where I shot a corporate shoot with this camera. I shot it all in 4K, and the results are fantastic. But again, I pulled that back down to uh, HD for the final export file. And so it wasn't part of the, the contract that I shot in 4K, uh, but I did shoot in 4K because the quality and then the downsampled version is super, super nice. So that's what I love about the camera. Um, yeah, other little features is this little button on the front here, which is great. Uh, this little button here, I don't know if you can see it, but basically I use this for whenever the camera's set up on this tripod, which is normally what I'm shooting into. Uh, I can use it to start and stop recording, which is fantastic. Final feature that I love about this camera is the link up to my mobile devices. So Canon has an app for it, and uh, it's fantastic. It really is worthwhile, a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, what I can do when I shoot vlogs or anything that I'm shooting, even corporate shoot, I can have the camera behind me uh, on a 7200 lens and I can be sitting with my phone in my hand or an iPad and I can see what's happening on screen. I can change focus, I can change settings with the camera and I can hit stop and go for record button without even touching the camera. So the app's called Camera Connect from um, Apple and it's basically the ability to fully control the 5D Mark IV from your iPhone and that is an awesome feature. I use that feature probably more than any other feature on the camera and the way that I shoot. So it's perfect for interviews. I don't even need a second person in an interview. Uh, I can manage the interview on my own and that's been a real uh, plus as well. So those are the reasons why I love the 5D Mark IV. It gets a bad rap but I would highly recommend this camera being part of your kit. If you've got the 5D Mark III and you're looking to upgrade, don't listen to all the bad reviews. Go out and get one, go out and test one. Whatever you have to do, get your hands on one 
and see for yourself. This is a beast of a camera. It is awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.